Last May, I traveled north to Baffin Island, to Nunavut's capital, Iqaluit. It was eight days experiencing some of the most rugged landscapes in Canada and meeting the beautiful people who call it home. This is my story. I don't know how I get so lucky, but look where we are right now. This is truly the middle of nowhere. Got me, Tim Hortons. We're at the Winnipeg airport. We are waiting to board our flight. We are headed north. We are going to Nunavut, to its capital, to Iqaluit, a place I've never been before. Had been there for eight days. I just heard there's a weather advisory, so cross my fingers. If there's any issues. Next time you see us, we will likely be in Rankin Inlet for a layover. Thank you so much. much. Definitely not improving. As soon as we get information, we'll pass it along. Good morning from Rainy, Ottawa, Canada's capital. So yesterday, we flew from Winnipeg to Rankin Inlet. From Rankin Inlet, we made it to Iqaluit, but not on the ground. There was thick fog. We circled. The pilot told us we had about gas for 15 to 20 minutes of circling, hoping that the fog would clear. The fog did not clear. And then we got rerouted to Ottawa and I spent the night here. Part of this trip, which I haven't really given any background on yet, is a trip for ski and Can-Am. I was rescheduled to fly Friday now. And just the logistics of the shoot, that really cut into the filming time. Long story short, Nils, amazing guy, one of the marketing guys from BRP, the company that owns Can-Am and ski uh, he offered up his flight for me. So I'm flying out in a couple hours, a direct flight to Iqaluit, crossing our fingers that there's no fog that we can land because there isn't that many flights that go into this remote, remote city. So we're gonna pack up, head back to the airport and hopefully have better luck than yesterday. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Caldwell. On behalf of Canadian North and your entire crew, we'd like to thank you for flying with us today. We hope to see you again. Well, to be honest, I didn't think we were gonna make it, but we're here. And Nils, the guy that gave up his flight for me, got on the flight as well. So welcome to Callowit. We have a massive day ahead. That is a lot of Arctic char, which is hopefully we're gonna catch this fish. I've never been ice fishing in May, so this will be a first, but this is more than just a fishing trip. I got asked to come along, part of a shoot for Can-Am and ski -Doo. So that's how this whole thing came together. There's a production crew. I'm gonna be filming a little behind the scenes, part of something much, much bigger. So anyways, you're gonna meet Nil shortly. I hear we're going for a snowmobile ride today. Likely the biggest snowmobile ride of my life. Do you know what type of fish this is, Nils? Absolutely not. Come on, you, you can figure this out. A tuna. Nope. Cod. Nope. Arctic char. Arctic char. That's for what we're sure. Is that what we're going for? Give me a little introduction. What? No, I don't do introductions. Yeah, you do. What introduction? Who are you? Why are you here? Hi, I'm Nils. I <laughs> work for BRP and we're freaking in the <laughs> yes. Arctic Canadian tunnel. Oh man. We first thought, we not neither neither of us were gonna show up, but now we're both here and uh, I think those those guys are pointing at us. I think they want us to come. Oh, it's Nils, how are you? Good. Oh my goodness, I can't believe we made it. Callaway translates to place of many fish. It is the furthest north city in Canada, boasting somewhere around 8,000 residents. And it's cold up here with an average temperature through the year of a balmy negative eight degrees Celsius with a record low of negative 45.6. All right, it's complete chaos here right now. A lot of people. Oh, my name's on a box. Spelled my name wrong, but that's okay. Anyways, we got expeditions, a lot of ski doos here. We are going on a 160 kilometer one-way sled ride. Our guide Alex, who I just met in the airport, 
is going to be our host for the week. And this is one of many adventures. I'm not going to film too much because I got to get ready. I don't want to slow down the rest of the production, but we got like, this is my dream sled right here. Look at that. Look at the gear. And how do they get it all up here? I'm assuming by, how do they get the sleds up here by ship? Uh, some of them come by ship. Yeah. And I believe most of these came by plane. So uh, some of them were uncrated from the sea lift. Yeah. This one came by plane. Tell me about yourself, Gary. Uh, I'm Gary Ishmaili from Ikhaluit. You grew up here? Uh, uh, pretty much. I'm from the next community, Pangnertung. Cool. And I've been here since 1999. Amazing. So these are my hunting grounds and... And you're gonna show us an adventure. Yeah. Amazing. I enjoy being out there. Car All right, so we're loaded up, suited up. Yeah. We got the crew and from Alterna Films, possible, Zero to we'll BC. Like, I mean, we'll they do some phenomenal them. work and they're gonna be capturing it. So some of the footage, they said they will share some of their footage, which is very gracious of them. Um, but they're shooting the main high production pieces from this trip that you'll see on the ski -Doo and the Can-Am channels. But we got, we got a lot of gear, a lot of sleds. And uh, lean, lean good when we're going kind of sideways. So kind of lean hard, sometimes they like to be tippy. All right, we got the briefing. We're going with Alex. Polar outfitting, a big crew of guys. We're gonna get to meet them all more as we go. And I'm not gonna try to get my camera in the way too much because there's some professionals here. There was no getting settled in before we hit the road. Due to our flight delays, we were already behind schedule. I knew we were in for a big sled ride, but I don't think I really understood what I was getting myself into. I put my full trust in Alex and his crew, and I was stoked to get out for a full immersion into our time in Nunavut. It didn't take long and the city was just a speck on the horizon behind us. It was a pretty wild feeling to be snowmobiling across the frozen ocean. We're with Alex, our guide for the week. Alex, are you from McAllowit or where are you? You're from a local different community? Yeah, I'm from uh, Greece Fjord. Greece Fjord. Oh, that's that's a tiny one, isn't it? How many it's, people live there? There's 120 people. Really? Yeah. And where is it from McAllowit? It's the most northern community. Really? Yeah. It's the farthest you could go. And now you're in Polar Outfitting. How many years have you been doing this? Three. Three years. Three years, yeah. And you do hunting, fishing, everything like taking a lot of fishing. <laughs> a lot of fishing, yeah. Sorry, this is the pack guy. So this pushes against shore right now. Like this is now we're on back on land. Yeah, we're just on the edge of the land. And then is it land all the way to? Come out. Yeah. This is amazing. Well, Alex and I are, uh, I guess we're the models for the shoot. You could say so. We've been kind of leading the way, and there's a pretty big crew, probably. 10, 10 sleds? Something like that, ten, yeah. Probably 10 snow machines, 10 ski behind us. He was saying this is the more challenging he's seen it through this. And it's kind of tough to tell with how flat the light is. Once we left town, it got uh, the fog and clouds kind of set in, but different riding than I've ever done before. And and they were saying that with it, you said on high tide, there'll be puddles in that water will come in and yeah, turn area slushy. Yeah, slushy. they'll swallow you. Would people be driving this trail every day almost? Would there be somebody going back and forth? Yeah. Yeah. Caribou jerky. Caribou jerky. Sure, thank you. The boys are coming. I don't know how I get so lucky, but look where we are right now. This is truly the middle of nowhere. This is just the first three hours of the trip and my mind has been blown. Unreal, this is stunning. It's nine o'clock right now, 9 p.m. and we still got so much light. Just look at this. Look at this house. So they have these little shacks along the trail that the Nunavut government has built if you get in trouble. So you can see there's actually, I think they said nine little huts along the way. That's where we went over the crazy sea ice. We're at number three. We gotta go all the way there tonight, but I gotta show you this. Like, look how sweet, first off, this backdrop. And then this little house. This is, I was not expecting to see this in the middle of nowhere, but check it out. It kinda feels like a sauna. Look at this. What do we got? We got a Lunchable, like it's been here for a while. We got some milk from 2022. A couple other goodies, a little bit of literature. I mean, I'd spend the night in here if this was gonna save my life, for sure. Okay, I think I'm holding up the crew. Okay. Quite the crew we're rolling with.
Well, we've been driving for probably another two hours now and the Northern Lights came out. Pretty, uh, pretty amazing ride, even in the dark. I can't wait to see all of this. Yeah, quite the train. You said another 30 kilometers, or I guess 30 is the crow flies, probably longer than that. Straight away, it's at 31 kilometers. Yeah. All right, well, hopefully in an hour, we'll be uh, pulling up to the house we're staying at in Kibarut. Well, Time check, I think it's 1.45 now. We left around 5 p.m. We got off the plane and went straight into like a six, seven or eight hour snowmobile ride. What is this life? Where are we right now? That's the real question. We didn't lose any toboggans. These guys are madmen with their toboggans. They just rip. I could barely keep up without a toboggan and they're just no problem. Well, Alex, you're gonna tour us around town? Yeah, let's go to the store. <laughs> well, I'm just wearing this, so I feel like a... You look good. I'm sponsored by Steve Ranella. He <laughs> sent these to me personally. He said, hey man, can you go test those out and none of it for me? That would be awesome. Uh, we made so it to Kimberly. Uh... We're, yeah, testing. <laughs> Nils, Nils put all the gear through the ringer yesterday. This is it. We're here. <laughs> well, this landscape is spectacular. It was, you know, coming in at two in the morning. You didn't really know what you were getting to, but wow, look at that. Kimberut, previously known as Lake Harbor, is a community of 400 people on the southwest corner of Baffin Island. It was at one time a Hudson's Bay Company trading post. In 2005, a proposal was made to create a road to Iqaluit, but it was determined to be impractical due to the routing over the mountains. In winter, by far the most practical and economical way to get there is by ski -Doo. While our time there was brief, it was an incredible glimpse into this remote community. Twenty-seven, ten bucks for pizza pops. It ain't cheap eating here. Bit of everything in here. This is all Nils wanted was Red Bull. Down here? Yeah. Yes. There it is. He's been getting the shakes. Nils and he, this is Red Bull. Dude, I needed it so bad. Look at this. There's not even a price, so it's just a surprise on <laughs> what it's gonna it's be. It's probably twenty-nine ninety-nine. I can't. Oh, get the king can. Still worth it. Tim Hortons. Tim Hortons of the north. There you go. <laughs> you promised me there was a Tim Hortons up here. Yeah. I got the post office over there. Slurpee machine. Oh, well, that was, I think maybe one of my first times in Northern store. A little bit of everything, maybe expensive, but considering where we are, you know, it's all part of it, but this is the closest thing I could find to Tim Hortons this morning. Now we're gonna talk to Alex and plan the day. There's talks of maybe touring the town, maybe of doing some ice fishing for cod, which would be my personal choice. This is spectacular. Iceberg carving. <laughs> Beautiful. Unique. What's the plan for today, boss? We're uh, packing up now and uh, we're going cod fishing. Cod fishing. We'll make our way on top before it gets too soft. I don't even Will we bring some back pad. or no? You don't? Yeah, we'll bring some back. How much ice is there going to be? Pretty thick, maybe five feet. Wow. All right, we're loading up. Next time you see us, we'll be drilling holes through five feet of ice looking for cod. While fishing was only a small part of what this trip was about, it was by far what I was most excited for. Ice fishing remote destinations like this are what I dream of. We were after Atlantic cod. The saltwater species will find their way into the lakes connected to the ocean. Alex brought us out to the middle of the lake and this is where we drilled our first hole. I didn't know how much fishing time we'd get on this trip so I was ready to make the most of every minute. Show me what you got. So this is a traditional setup. That's great. The line goes through right yep. here. We want more depth. We you just, just let some more out. Some more out. William's wobbler. When you pull out the fish, yeah. you have the handle. Oh yeah. You can hit the fish. <laughs> yeah, perfect. You can just kill them. Yeah. All right, let's see it. Let's see it. Are you going to catch one right now? Show us how it's done. Hopefully. <laughs> it's pretty deep here. Come on, you got one? Instant. Look at this, a cod on the ice. Dude, that is so awesome. <laughs> that is so cool. Is that about average size or they get bigger? They get bigger than that. 
Man. The ones on uh, Frobisher Bay, they get there as tall as me. Really? Yeah. That's incredible. Okay, I'm gonna get going. Maybe I'll try your way. We're gonna try a big old dinner bell. Tungsten. All right, we're dropping down. I can't imagine how many fish there are in this lake. There, there's the bottom. So you're a little bit off bottom? Yeah, loop it around like this. Yeah, oh, there you go, and then it sets the depth. That sets the depth, so it won't move. Yeah. I got one. Yeah? Instant. <laughs> Ooh, it feels big. <laughs> Dude, this is unbelievable. Seconds. We won't be hungry tonight. Jay. No, this is great. Oh, this is cool. Thank you, Alex, for sharing this. It feels big. Oh, it feels big. Oh, he just popped uh. off. No. <laughs> oh, man. Well, that was instant. Come on in. We've got, We've got one, one fish already. already and, uh, uh, Another one. On. This one isn't as big. There we go. First cod. <laughs> there we go. I lost a big one. Do you want to keep this one? Yeah, we'll keep them. All right. I'm in my happy place right now. Another one. Woohoo! We're on him. Ooh, that's a bigger one. <laughs> you don't have to be good to catch fish here, Alex. Look at that, it's a cool looking fish. Fish and chips? Yeah, fish and chips for supper. I don't know if I've experienced ice fishing like this before. Got him. Ooh, that's a nice one. Oh. Look at that. Well, you got it. There you go. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> this is insane. It's just a, it's just, just, it's a shark tank down there. This fishing was like nothing I had ever experienced. The spot Alex had us set up on was in the middle of the basin on this small arctic lake. After a few minutes of non-stop fish catching, we decided to drop a GoPro down on the end of one of our lines. The results were incredible. There were cod everywhere, suspending all throughout the water column in this crystal clear water. They were trying to eat the GoPro. Everybody soon joined in the action and it was a sight to behold. You know you're supposed to save the best spot for last, right? You're not supposed to take me straight yeah, to the no, best the spot. Yeah, the going to be boring. <laughs> yeah. It's all downhill from here. That sled ride alone made yeah. it, but this is... Made it all worth it. This eh? is, yeah. Even if we didn't catch a fish. Ooh, this one's decent size. It's one of the bigger ones. You said you're going to cook us Yeah, some, the good thing cod. about this, we'll catch a little bit extra fish to give away to people. Oh, you'll give it out to people in your yeah. community? Yeah, they say when you... Uh, <clears throat> Whatever you catch and you give it away for free, it's a tradition that uh, more luck will come out. More luck if you give back. That's yeah. that's great. Well, that was madness. We got a big pile of cod here. I, I expected to catch some, but nothing like this. Are you, oh, you don't even have a hook on. You just got a camera on the end of your hook. GoPro's in there and they're bumping into They're bumping into the GoPro? Or something. Well, they like the dinner, but I'm gonna re-rig this other, uh, I don't know if you call it a rod, but they're, they're fishing stick. All right, that's what we're trying now. Trying the Dragon Slayer. Instant. Oh wow, these are bigger ones. Look at this. I don't know how much fishing time we're gonna get, so I'm maximizing this maxi. right now. Getting my fix. We are doing some char fishing yet too. Woohoo! That'll be four hundred dollars, please. Oh, it just broke. Oh, it broke at the stick. I still got it. Oh yeah. Oh that's big. Look at this. Everyone's laughing at me behind the camera. I'm having the time of my life right now. Catching cod. These guys. So that's normal. Here yeah. <laughs> <It's> normal. <laughs> well thank you guys. The, I, I, the, the underwater footage. I couldn't believe how clear the water was and fish hitting the camera, trying to eat the camera. Spectacular. Yeah, I wasn't expecting this. Top 10 fishing experience ever, I think. Like, 
so unique, this stunning backdrop. We still have a long drive. It's two o'clock already, so we're gonna have to hit the road back. We're gonna be filming some of these amazing landscapes as we go. Oh man, life is so good. I haven't had this stupid smile for a while. Well, we are making some progress on our way back. I think we're at kilometer 70. I'm not exactly sure how long the ride back is. Somewhere between 120 and 160 kilometers, but we're stopping at this Anukshuk here. I've seen Anukshuks all over the place, but I only recently realized that they were used to mark hunting spots, fishing spots, obviously navigational routes. And some of these have been here for many, many years marking these paths. Uh, Alex was also telling me how the Anukshuk they would set it on specific spots in the lake and that's where they would set their nets and he said those same spots where the Anukshuks are, they're catching fish, you know, these days, which is, it's cool, that can be passed on, you know, the Anukshuk is going to stay for, you know, <laughs> unless someone knocks it down, but the rest of the crew is coming to join us, pretty epic view here. Well, we made it back late last night. You can actually see our accommodations on the hill behind us in a Callaway. We haven't really toured around the town too much. It's just been a whirlwind, but as you can hear behind us, there's some dogs barking. Not just any dogs, husky dogs, dog sled dogs. We're, uh, we're visiting a, a dog sledder named Amber. I'm gonna see the art of dog sledding, which is something that's definitely still alive up here. Lots of sled dogs you see tied up outside and these dogs love, love the cold. Being tied up outside is no problem for them, but we're gonna get some shots. And uh, then I think we're cooking up some cod that we caught later in the day today, so. Hey buddy. Hi, hello. Well, we finished the dog sledding filming, and now we're doing some fishing, cooking. Look at that pile of cod. Alex was saying how he shares a lot of the fish with people in his community. That's just a very common thing when they're hunting or fishing, they're sharing. Anyways, this is this little fish shack just outside of town. There's a bay right here. You can see that frazzle sea ice coming in. And we've been cooking some cod. I've eaten cod before, but not fresh that I caught myself. You're cooking now. You're burning some cod. You're you're, welcome. you're on duty. You're Isla. welcome. Did dude. you flip it? Oh, for sure I did. What do you think? Delicious. Delicious. Do you have a couple pieces? I do. Didn't bring any catch and cook along, but look at that white flaky. Probably some of the best fish I've had. Way go. Look at the steam <laughs> off that, dude. It can burn my fingers. While Alex is a fairly reserved guy, as the week went on, we got to know each other on a deeper level. These excursions and teaching others is where his passion lies. This trip wasn't even over yet, and we're already brainstorming adventures for me to come back to a Callaway. Today, we got a, a pretty cool, pretty cool day planned. Um, so Alex does a bit of everything in the North. He does a lot of education courses, training type stuff, a lot with the youth. 
He said that's one of his favorite parts is teaching the youth. We had a discussion the other day off camera and he was just talking about how suicide is, is a big issue in the north. You know, keeping the kids occupied, showing them the outdoors, teaching them is very, very important. So that that's his heart, which I find very cool. And so he does firearm safety training. He does hunting, fishing, survival, all that stuff. So today we're taking out some youth and we're going ice fishing for Arctic char. We changed our rides. We still got the snow machines. So we got a few Can-Ams today tracked out. We got the Defender. This thing is a beast. We got the Outlander. This is probably what I'll be driving. We're gonna hook a toboggan up. Yep, gonna be another good day in paradise. We'll catch a chair. You think this will catch a chair? Might. Maybe. Maybe. How's it over here, Elvis? Good. You fun drilling a hole? Huh. It was pretty cool, eh? Yeah. All right, we're dropping down. 15 feet, it's 15 feet here. Drilled some holes with the kids, showing the electric auger. That was fun. He's teaching the kids. Oh. Oh, get something? We got something on the line. Hey, hey, hey. Oh. hey. First char. Put him in butter, he says. Alex said, do not put this fish back. If I don't drop him down the hole, I'm not gonna argue with the man. There you go. Dude. We are eating Arctic char. Uh. <laughs> well, Arctic char fishing. How freaking good is that thing? It's good. the Gatorade with a snowball is going to win it, okay? Go! Ah! Oh, 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 oh. Okay, whoever gets it first can have it. Yeah! Oh, there we go! Woo! Another one. Oh, that was a big one. That was a big one. Dude, I just missed a big one. I got one. There we go! Yeah! Oh! That's a big one. Let's see. <laughs> Look at that one. Well, the guys just caught a good one. That was awesome. I knew there was a couple around the dinner bell. The one that we tied up the other day did it, so good. Well, we caught one nice one, a couple small ones. Yeah, how was your day? It was great. I lost, I think I, I missed a big one though. Oh yeah. I had one that hit real hard. <laughs> Where are we headed to next? We're going on the sea ice. Nice. Another day in the north, 
today we're headed to the edge of the sea ice and there's a chance to see whales out there, seals, who knows? We'll see, see how it goes, just another day. Here you are, are we? Yes, uh, we're in a pillin, yeah. This never freezes in the winter. <clears throat> the current is so strong. So this is water all year round, minus 40 or not. Unbelievable, so you guys hunt here? Yeah, what times in the summer, like there'll be seals around here in this uh, channel. Yeah. Belugas go up this way, or this way through the current, up that way to the, there's a river up there. So I think they feed off fish up there. When we were talking about coming here, I was like, oh, I, I want to go for a dip in the ocean. This current is just oh, insane. I get swept we'll away. We'll have to tie you up. You'll be <laughs> yeah, tie me up and <laughs> let me float. But there's little ice chunks and they're just like going in a circle. It's mm -hmm. pretty crazy. So this spot would have been a, a common hunting spot for hundreds of years for... Yes. Yeah, yeah, a traditional grocery store. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Can you give me the lesson with this? The ice safety lesson? This is our number one tool that we don't leave behind. What do you guys call it? Unak. What, what does that translate to? Harpoon. Harpoon? This one's not a harpoon because it's just just for checking the thickness of the ice. What do you feel safe with? Like how many how many strikes into the ice? Do you want to show me? For this one, you want to yeah. go up when you're walking. Once yep. is good enough to walk on. Yep. One, two, enough to drive your skidoo on. Really? Two and you're good for the sled? Yeah, all wow. you need is just a little bit of ice to float because the salt water ice has more flex. Oh really? Than fresh water. Huh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Fresh water, ice, shatters, this stuff. Has movement to it. Yeah, we even drive on it when it's moving from the really? waves like this. That's wild. Crazy. That is some fast current. What's the plan, Gary? Well, we're gonna try to go fishing, I guess. I picked the nicest uh, day. Yeah, <laughs> beautiful day, a bit windy. Yeah. Well, the rest of the crew is headed back. They're flying to Ottawa and then Vancouver and Texas. But anyways, Gary said he'd take me fishing today, which I'm very appreciative of. The cod was super cool, but I, I do want to catch a proper char through the ice. So we got the tracked Can-Am. So we're gonna be riding in, in luxury. We thought about taking the sleds out, but it's like 70 kilometer winds. It's kind of nasty. And we're going to a spot that, uh, have you been here before Gary or no? Yes, I've been, I've yeah. been yeah. They're, they've got history from a lot of different spots. We originally were going to plan to go on a bit of a further drive, but thought for safety purposes, we'll stay a little bit closer to town. So see what happens. Gary's the man. Oh, oh, oh. oh, it's pretty deep. So these would be fish that would be trapped in the river here, likely? No, they go up and down. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Beautiful spot. When the river breaks up, they go back to the ocean. Okay, this is great. 
You got a fish? Nice. Oh, he's going. <laughs> oh, oh no! Is it there? <laughs> you saw it? Yeah. yeah. There are fish here. Yeah. yeah. This spot was different than anything else we'd fished this trip. A deep hole on one of the rivers flowing into Frobisher Bay. While the spot was small, it had active fish. The question was, did it have one of the big char I had seen so many photos of? This is our last day of fishing and I was hoping we could end it with a bang. But let's be real, even if we didn't get a single bite, this was still one of the most incredible trips I'd ever been on. And at a certain point, I'm just being greedy. But you got Harley. Yeah. Good I one? Think, I think it's like good. Oh, oh, hooked him in the oh. tail. <laughs> he was bigger. Yeah. He was hooked in the tail. <laughs> oh, wow. There's a fish chasing me instantly. Yeah, bigger one. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Come on. As my bait was falling down, he was coming up. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo! the one come on oh, one. yeah oh no 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 hold on caught you and it caught me in the head it won't do oh man that was the one that was the one was that the picture perfect fish to end the trip? Well, we'll never know. Just a fish story I'll be able to tell my boy one day. This trip will be burned into my memory forever. If you ever have a chance to visit none of it, please do not hesitate for a second. I've been fortunate to travel some pretty incredible places, but there is still nothing that compares to Canada's far north.